do, we'll thank you, praise you for it now. We'll ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we do pray. Amen, 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 amen. All righty, amen. We're going to uh, get right into our Sunday school lesson today. I'm going to ask you to turn to two places in the scripture. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, you'll start right there this morning. And then I'm going to have you turn to another verse. Uh, as, I, as I said, uh, thank you for praying. i uh, traveled a lot of miles this week, Charlotte. Uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So that was about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six hundred miles. Uh, uh, those three nights. Then last night down to Kings Mountain. And um, thank God for his traveling mercy. The traffic was uh, terrible uh, down there. So I cut through the country and went down through uh, uh, Lincoln and Stanley that way down to uh, the uh, revival the last two nights. And it was a lot, lot less traffic. But had a great time, Lord. Thank you for praying. And uh, we've we've had a, a one bus tour up this morning, and had to uh, take Kelly the van, and just one thing and another. Been been very very hectic since last night, but we're here by the grace of God, Amen. And uh, I'm left-handed today because I don't hurt my shoulder again somehow or another, and it's tough. It's rough right now, so I'm I'm doing everything left-handed. So. Uh, uh, pray for us. Thank the Lord for a left hand. Glory to God. Amen. Let's all uh, look at Ephesians chapter number four this morning. And um, I want to look at a verse of scripture here. The, the book of Ephesians, the epistle of Paul. Epistle means letter. You know that. Uh, and uh, we'll look here at verse number uh, 15. Uh, Ephesians chapter four and verse number 15. Amen. Uh, amen. Did you get here? All right. Listen, he said to find the original key to that bus. Whoever has the original key, not a copy, because the, the electric system locked down. So that's what we need to be looking for. Anybody's got a key? I think Randy's got one. And if we find the original, that might help. I don't know. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15. Everybody looking at it? Ephesians 4 and verse 15. But speaking the truth in love. Now, I'm not going to talk about that this morning, but that's a good verse. Speak the truth in love. A lot of preachers get up and speak a lot of stuff that's true, but in a smart, aleck, hateful attitude, and that ain't right. A man ought to tell the truth, but he ought to do it in love. We ought to tell people what's right, but not like we hate them, you know. Uh, I've heard preachers get up and, and tell people they're going to hell like they're glad. And it ought to break our heart to tell somebody they're going to hell. And they are. People's not saved are going to hell. But we ought not to feel good about it. One guy, I heard him on the radio, and I don't think he's, I, he's on the radio, and he's saying, praise God, uh, if you don't get saved, praise God. Uh, you better get saved, praise God. If you don't praise God, you're going to hell, praise God. And I said, no. Don't say praise God because somebody's going to hell. Uh, <laughs> He wasn't even listening to himself. I think sometimes they just babble, you know, and they don't listen to what they're saying themselves. But uh, anyway, uh, the Bible said, speak the truth in love. You speak the truth in love. So you tell people what's right, but you do it with a broken heart. You do it with boldness, but you do it with a broken heart. When you're witnessing, same way. And, and you've heard me say many times, people don't, they don't care how much you know uh, unless they know how much you care. Got it? Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him. This is Christian people. In all things, which is the head, even Christ. Look at them two little words there in verse 15. Grow up. <laughs> now, why don't you grow up? Uh, Paul, Paul's the one that made that phrase, brother. He said, you people need to grow up. And... Uh, you know, don't, don't you get offended when somebody tells you that? Don't you get mad? Why don't you just grow up? Uh, nobody likes to be told that. But the, that's the truth, though. That's the truth. It's true. All of us need to grow up a little bit, don't we? Sure do. We, we act like babies a lot. And so I want to talk about that, growing up in the Lord. Growing up in the Lord. Let's look at a couple more verses here to establish what I'm, what I'm going to teach about. Ephesians, I mean, Hebrews 5. Flip on over to your right to Hebrews 5 and look at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13. And uh, here's another verse. Hebrews 5, 13. Uh, look at verse number 13 and 14. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful 
in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. The Bible compares you as a Christian to it like a little baby. A little baby drinks milk. And a baby can't eat milk, eat meat, until it's grown up a little bit and got some teeth and can chew. Now, a Christian is the same way. When you first get saved, you, earn the, you feed off the milk of the Word of God. As you get older, you're supposed to have meat. And what's sad in most churches today, you've got people that have been saved for years and years and years that are still on the bottle, on baby formula. Spirits, it's terrible, it's terrible. You know, pastor in a church, you ought to, listen, I, I'm not whining, I thank God for my job, God's been good to me, but pastor in a church now, that it's like being in charge of a gigantic nursery. It really is. I mean, I mean, you know, grown people, 30, 40, 50, 60, that act like little babies. I mean, really? You ought to try this sometime. If you ever think it's, it's easy, Pastor, you ought to try it. We're talking about 50-year-old people crying because they got their feelings hurt. And some, Look, look. if you're a grown person here, you ought to get used to getting your feelings hurt once in a while. Grow up, man. Get over it. Quit sucking your thumb. You know, a little cry baby. I mean, you can't operate with this many people in a room and not get your feelings hurt once in a while. Get over it. I mean, I mean, people say, well, I, got, I, I talked to somebody the other day and I said, where's so-and-so? Oh, yesterday, yesterday. He said, they don't go to church no more. People been in church for years. I said, what happened? He said, they got their feelings hurt. I mean, listen, you get your feelings hurt at Walmart and you go right back. Somebody put a dent in your car and you'll go right back there next Saturday. Uh, you're just a baby. You're just a cry baby. And I don't mean to fuss at you, but you can't stay a baby forever. I, amen? Uh, uh, I, uh, stand up there, Spencer. That's that, Spencer. Stand up there, that little fella right there. All right. What if I told you this morning, we're glad to have Spencer with us today. And Spencer, is just his birthday was yesterday. He is four years old. You say, what? You say, uh-uh, he ain't four years old. He's a freak of nature. He's four years old. He ain't four years old. He's a freak of nature. But he, 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 uh, he ain't four years old. All right? All right? You, you can sit down. Now, what about, what about little Solomon right there? Stand him up. Stand up there on that seat, little Solomon. Stand up there on that seat where they can see. What if I told you today is little Solomon's birthday, and he's celebrating his 47th birthday. 47 years old. There he is right there. You know, everybody in there go, oh my goodness. Oh, how sad. He, he's a fidget. That's what my daddy called him. <laughs> what my daddy called him, fidget. <laughs> we had, uh, he's a, a dwarf. There's something wrong with him. We had a bunch of, we had a bunch of uh, midgets come to church uh, in Marion one time. They started coming on Sunday night and they was drunk. Every Sunday night they was drunk. <laughs> really, they was. You, you, I could walk in the back of the church and I could smell alcohol where they all sit. And my daddy come in one night and he said, where in the world them fidgets come from? <laughs> and they come for quite a, quite, quite a while. But uh, uh, if I said that, if I said he's 47 years old, you'd say, something's wrong with him. I'm going to tell you something, people. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I will say this as nice as I can. But if you've been saved 15, 20, 25 years, we ought not have to treat you like you're a little baby. Really. Really. Honest. Sometimes I feel like I'm walking on eggshell. Well, if I say that, they'll get, if I do that, they'll, they'll, I mean, good night, y'all. We're adults. Supposed to be. This is the adult Sunday school class. Supposed to be. Uh, this is the adult Sunday school class. Back there's the nursery. Sometimes I think we ought to just all of us go back there and let them have this room. And all of us go back there and get a pacifier and, and sit around and, and sing uh, same patty cake or something. <laughs> uh, it's awful. It's awful. Uh, look at Hebrews 5.13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. See, when you're a man, you can sit down and eat a steak, brother. I mean, you can sit down with one of them in bone rib eyes or bone in, uh, bone in the rib eye, and 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 just take it up. My daddy, daddy would uh, when when daddy used to get drunk, he wouldn't eat for a week, and uh, when he'd sober up, he'd go to the 
store and buy him a steak right there and just cook it in front of him. Just there and eat it with his hand like a dog. And, uh, and you know, a man, a grown man, need a steak. Amen? A grown man pick it up to a big piece of meat, brother, and, and chew it up. And you're supposed to be, look, if you've been saved a long time, I'm sorry, y'all, my arm is messed up. I don't even know how I did it. Preaching, I guess. I can't raise it up. Uh, uh, if you've been saved a long time, uh, you, you, ought, you ought to be able to handle a steak. Put it this way. If you've been saved 20 years, you ought to know where to show somebody where the Antichrist is in the Bible. You ought to know how to show somebody where alcohol is wrong in the Bible. If I stood a few people up in here right here this morning and I said, "Give me, show me two verses about drinking alcohol, you couldn't do it. Most of you couldn't. Now, see why that makes my job so hard? I mean, I ain't complaining, but y'all, come on. What do you do with your time? See, you're crying right now. <laughs> well, I couldn't. Well, what's wrong with you? You're, you're, uh, you're this big. Spirit, uh, physically in this big. Sp I tell you what you do. You, all you do is watch TV and play on your phone. And, and you don't spend no time in that book. All right. Who can give me two references on alcohol? Raise your hand and give it to me right now. Without looking at your Bible. That's one. Proverbs. What is that? 29. 20 verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drinks is raging. Or can anybody give me another one? That's it. That's one other thing. I'll back up 215. Woe unto him that puts a bottle to his neighbor. Look, you know, alcohol is a pretty important subject. You need to know what the Bible says about it. I just pulled that out of thin air. Uh, can anybody give me a verse of scripture on, uh, 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 oh, I don't know. Why, why it's wrong to have sex out of, outside of marriage? One verse. Yep. All right, what does it say? There right, you go. Plead fornication. Every sin that a man doeth. How about uh, uh, every sin that a man doeth without the body is without the body, but he that committeth fornication committeth against his sins against his own body. Uh, marriage is honorable in all, but, and the bed is undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. What y'all been doing with your time? I, I'm, not, I'm not mean, really, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just trying to make you think, oh, we need to, we need to grow up. You, as a, I have people call me, and they'll say, Brother Danny, I was talking to my neighbor, and don't you, don't, don't feel bad about calling me, because it's okay if you do. I was talking to my neighbor, and they won't know what the Bible said about uh, being gay. What does the Bible say about it? You better know what it says. I mean, if you're against it, you better know what the Bible says about it and be able to show somebody. Can you do it? Romans 1, uh, Leviticus 18. Oh, that's a man lies with a man, as it lies with a woman. You say, well, you're a preacher. You're supposed to know that. I don't know. I don't know where you get in your head that the preacher's only one is supposed to know the Bible. Uh, now, it's, it's a taken for granted. Preachers probably know it better than the average church member. But if you've been saved 20 years and you don't know where the Bible talks about alcohol or fornication or homosexuality, you're getting up over Lauren Daigle in dumbness. I mean, you know, the most popular gospel singer in America don't know if it's wrong to be gay. Think about that. Ministry, ministry. I'm in the ministry. Travel all over the country representing Jesus Christ. Is it wrong to be gay? I don't really know. That's what she said. You see, and if, if we're dealing with people who, who don't even know what the Bible says... Um, it's like, it, it's like, do you know, would you know what to tell somebody if they ask you, um, when you die, who was it we was talking about this other night? Oh, about going straight to heaven. Who was we talking about that? Oh, it was DJ. And we were talking about, would you know where in the Bible, show them where you go straight to heaven when you die? Yeah, that's one. And, and, uh, the rich man and Lazarus. Uh, as went there, and rich man went to hell. The body don't teach soul sleep. So you should be familiar with these stories. And I know what you say. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just don't have time to study the Bible all the time like you do. Now, uh, you, <laughs> the truth is, you got as much time as I do, and most of you got more as far as, as, as Bible study time. So uh, I'm not fussing. I'm just saying, let's get in it. 
Let's grow up. Let's grow up. Now, let me just say a few things about comparing us to being spiritual babies. Literally, spiritual babies. Uh, one thing you'll notice about kids is that children are very impatient. Boy, when they want something, they want it right then. Right? Don't want to wait on nothing. Uh, that's a sign of immaturity. When a person has no patience, that's a sign of immaturity. Uh, you say, well, you know, mama's like that. Daddy's like that. They, they, they don't want to wait for nothing. No, listen, that is a sign of immaturity. Now, I'll tell you, I'm the first person. Y'all know me. I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait on nothing. If I'm waiting on something, I'll do something else while I'm waiting on that. Uh, but I have, by the help of the Lord, got patience. You know the only way in the world you're ever going to get patience? Somebody tell me. Tribulation. The only way you're ever going to have patience is have trouble. If you have enough trouble, it'll give you some patience. The reason kids ain't got no patience, they ain't had no trouble. But if you go through enough stuff, you'll, you'll slow down a little bit and think things through. Uh, I've heard people say, Lord, give me patience. What you're really saying is, let something awful happen to me. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Don't pray for patience. Uh, uh, tribulation worketh patience. You go through enough trouble, you'll, you'll, you'll have some patience. And kids don't want to wait. Kids don't want to wait. When my, uh, when my youngest, Corey, was, oh, Lord, she was, I don't know, um, 20, 20 months, 18, 22 months old, I'd put her in her bed. She had a little bed in her room. I'd put her in there, and I'd say, now go to sleep. And uh, she'd whine around there a little bit and finally go to sleep. Uh, you got, you got to break them to that, make them do it. And uh, I, I, would, I would go in my bedroom, and I had, I went, and somebody told me, they said, Danny, you need to buy you one of these little old, little old monitors, little monitors they came out with back then. That was a long time ago. They got a lot better now. They had a little thing like that, like a little radio, and you leave it on. I'd leave it on her room, leave it on my room, because I was trying to make her sleep by herself. You know, they, none of them want to sleep by herself. You have to make them. You have to make them. They'll be, they'll be right between you and your husband when they're in high school. And, and, uh, uh, and you know, that's right. I know people do. I know people, uh, they, they slept with their parents. So they were almost in junior high, and they almost got sick then after a while. But uh, when they're as big as you are, they need to be in their own bed. But uh, I, I'd had that little thing, and uh, and I'd hear, and she'd go, ah, 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 ah. And I thought, oh, no, I just got sleep. And, and she'd start crying. And I hate to tell you all this, I was a bad parent. I put my pillow over my <laughs> I thought, I'll just drown her out. Maybe she'll go back to sleep. That's awful. I know. I know. Man, I, I was tired. I, I went 16 hours a day. And uh, I, I remember I'd, I'd uh, go down. I know what she wanted. wanted that bottle. So I'd go in there, get the bottle out of her bed. And I'd say, be right back. And she'd scream, scream, scream. And I'd put milk, put it in the microwave, and she'd be screaming. I thought, if you just hush, it's coming in a minute. It ain't going to make it a bit faster to cry and scream. And I knew in my head... That that her it wasn't gonna take but a second to fix that meal, and that's the way we are. We are. Why don't God do this? Why don't the Lord do that? I want to. I want. We, we, we. You know, uh, yeah, the Lord ain't gonna bless me. Why did He let this happen? I, I got. You know, and, and and look, just calm down. He's he's heating it up. He's got your answer in the microwave. Just chill out. You know, give him give him. Don't be so in such a hurry. Learn to wait on the Lord. Children are impatient. Very impatient. I'll tell you something else about children. Children are stingy. Children are very stingy. They'll have a, a pack of gum, and they'll put two pieces in their mouth, and their sister will get, no. Ain't that right? Children are stingy. You say, well, that sounds like my husband. He's a child. He's a child, really. He's an overgrown child. That's right. You say, uh, and, no, you can't have none of this. Kids, they'll hoard all up all their toys and won't let another one play with their toy. Very seldom, very seldom you'll find a kid that naturally wants to share things. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, 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 
Molly, Molly's real good about stuff like that. Molly's real, very generous with her stuff. And I mean, and she's, she's like all the rest of us. She's got her fault. But I tell you, she's, she's very free hearted with her money. You give her money and she'll go buy somebody else something with it. That's rare. That's rare for a kid. Buddy, most kids, you give them money, I'm going to go buy me some. Uh, that's right. Uh, children are stingy. You know, anybody remember what I preached on last Sunday morning? Tithe it. If you didn't hear it, you need to go back online and make yourself, oh boy, I got out of that. No, you need to go back and listen to it and get caught up. If everybody get caught up and do what they're supposed to, church wouldn't have to beg for nothing. That's right. Children are stingy. Children are very stingy. Um, you know, like the, they said, there's two little boys at the, at, at, um, at the Walmart. They was riding that little pony, you remember? And, and they're struggling under like that and like that. And he said, if one of us would get off of here, I could ride it better. That's, that's, a, that's a perfect illustration of immaturity. If one of us get off of here, I could ride better. All right. Me first, you next. Let me tell you something about yourself. All of us. Human nature is me first, you next. And you have to fight against that. You have to fight against putting yourself and your want and your needs ahead of everything and everybody else. It, Jesus said, if I lay down my life for you, you have to lay down your life for the brethren. And God's been mighty good to all of us. And we need to train ourselves, grow up. Somebody got to grow up. Somebody got to be mature enough to say, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to just worry about what I want. I'm going to worry about the needs of others. Uh, my bus kids, our, our Sunday school class, our church, our, our, the ministry, our, the way our time, all of that comes under the heading of just being stingy. I'll tell you something else about little kids. Little babies get their feelings hurt real easy. If they're embarrassed, if they're rebuked, if you fuss at them, they think you're mad at them. Uh, if, you, if, you, if they don't get to sing, uh, if they don't, okay, we're taking up this offering. To, uh, this is a little Sunday school offering. You give a dollar or whatever you can. It's not your regular tithing offering. A little Sunday school offering. They're going to use it to help people with. So do that while while we're talking. Uh, if they don't get to sing, I've I've known people come to sing, and the Lord move in on the service, and and people got to come and altar and getting right with God, and and everything got people got to shout and everything else. And they didn't get to sing, and they got mad and got their feelings hurt. And uh, that's, that's, that makes it very difficult on, on the preacher. Oh my goodness, you don't know how the spot you put it. The, the difficulty of being up here trying to please God first, but worrying about so-and-so. See? You see the con conflict. Uh... Once in a while, somebody come to me and they'll say, Brother Danny, I got a song ready. If you need me, fine. If you don't, fine. And if you mean that, that really helps. That helps tremendously because it gives me liberty to try to follow the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, but uh, I know preachers, I've been preaching revivals and stuff, and the Lord blessed and, and God moves and everything going real good and it's time for the preaching. And they'll say, now so-and-so has to come up here and say, because he doesn't told them. And he knew that family, the whole family would get mad if he didn't let them sing. And uh, that, that's the way kids act. That's the way kids act. Uh, and, uh, what it boils down to is sometimes they don't trust their parents. And what it boils down to in church is you don't trust your preacher, me, me or whoever's up here doing it. You have to have a certain amount of trust that whoever's leading the service will try to follow the Lord. And I hope that you do. I hope you do. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if you don't think that I try to follow the Lord here, you are smoking bad dope. Because I do try. I might not always get it done right, but I'm telling you one thing, that's my heart. Listen, when I get up here in this pulpit, I, my desire is, Lord, I want to try to do what you want me to do. I mean that with all my heart, and God knows I mean that. Amen? Amen? When I'm at home or something like that, I might be a little less serious. But i tell you one thing, brother. When it comes to this right here, I'm serious as a heart attack. And, and I mean business, what I'm doing up here. So uh, don't, don't get your feelings hurt so easy. Um, if you say, say something, I've, I've, a lot of times I've hurt people's feelings and didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. And they at least said, oh, 
Did you know what he said? I know he was talking to me. And honest to the Lord, I didn't even know it. And you know, the truth is, even if he was talking to you, if, he, if you're guilty, get it right. Even if he was talking to you. And, and I, don't, you know, I don't get up here and just try to buttonhole people. And, you know, you know I, I think you just preach general like a shotgun. Boom. You know, let it fall wherever God puts it. And uh, so uh, children get their feelings hurt easy. Uh, if I remember playing ball, playing basketball. Buddy, if we do bad or do something at halftime, man, our coach, he'd get red in the face. And, buddy, he would bless us out. And we sat right there and took it. I mean, I was 15 years old. And I sat there and let him talk. He'd cuss. I mean, he'd cuss. And he'd say, you boy, need I mean, and listen, you think that, some of them football coaches, buddy, they'd smack them around and everything else. Grab them like that and shake them. What if you did church people like that? What if I grabbed you and said, where was you at last Sunday? <laughs> That'd be it for you. That'd be it for you. I can't believe you don't to me like that. You know? see, see, you know why them football players is where they are? They're tough. They're men. Amen. Nobody likes to be fussed at. I don't like to be fussed at. Man, one time, one time somebody was, uh, you know, Ball players pick up stuff from other basketball players. They see one do it, they all try to do it. Even if it's not as and people's throwing bounce passes. And there you if I throw a mic a ball, the quickest pass between two distances is a straight line. So if I throw it to him straight, that's the quickest way to get it to it. If I bounce it, it's gotta go boom, boom. And the only time you do that, somebody's got their arm out like this. If somebody's got their arm out like this right here, you bounce it under them. But people's just throwing bounce passes for no reason. And boy, he called us over there. He said, the next person that throws a bounce pass, they're going to sit down. And, and but we knew he meant it. And it wasn't a few minutes out there, and I get in the game, you know, like a, a ball player is supposed to. I get my head in the game. When I'm out there in the, head in the game, I'm just out in the backyard playing. You forget the fans. You forget the referees. Yeah, and we're just coming down the court for a fast break like that, you know. And I seen a boy coming down this way around, and I went, boom, throw that bounce pass to him, he doesn't lay up. And coach said, that's all right, Castle. That's why he called me Castle. Because there, it was needful, and it worked. But it hurt my feelings when he fussed at me. But I was right back the next day. And that's the way you know, people say, well, I've, I've had, we've had people write in and say, well, I wouldn't dare let somebody holler and scream at me like that. What, what in the world kind of a, what, a, a, a child? Look, we all need hollered and screamed at. I do. I listen to preaching every week, buddy. And I mean, some, you know what I do sometimes? I'll make myself listen to some preacher that I really don't like and say, take it like a man, shut up. It's like eating Turnip greens or something. It's good for you, you know. I don't like I don't like spinach. I like spinach. Anybody in here like spinach? I know you say something wrong with somebody like spinach. I mean, yeah, it's, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. Of uh, my my second grade teacher made me eat spinach. Back then, when you went to lunch, you had to eat everything on your plate. Everything you put on your plate at school, you had to eat it. And I thought I was going to throw up. I think I did throw up. I, I was little, and I have never eat it since. Never. Uh, but sometimes I listen to preaching. It's like like vinegar, brother. Like vinegar. You need to listen. So I won't listen to him. I wonder why. Uh, he hits you somewhere. Do you, do you sort of rebuke you somewhere? You need, you, need to be, you need to be fussed at. We're flawed. We're flawed people. We have imperfections. And if, look, y'all... You'll never grow up if you have to be coddled all the time and petted all the time. Have you ever seen a kid that's just been petted and spoiled rotten? Oh, good night. What a menace to society. I mean, I mean, they're, what, they're a burden on the country, brother. Uh, you have to take care of them, feed them and everything. And they have to be coddled and babied and petted all the time. All the time. Uh, I've, I've seen so many people like that. They just uh, get starts so easy. And 
uh, I, right sitting, sitting right there where I think about where Terry's sitting. There's a lady who sat there one time, and uh, she's come real good for a while. It was years ago. Y'all probably don't even know who I'm talking about. And she quit coming, and I asked somebody, I said, where's old so-and-so? And they said, you know, Brother Danny, I saw her the other day at the store. And she said, I tried to talk to him. He walked right by me and wouldn't even shake my hand. And she quit coming to church there. Now think about that. Just let that sink in for a second. You know, between Sunday school and preaching is, is a bad time to try to talk to me. I mean, it was air conditioning. It it's too hot in here. I don't need somebody back in the nursery. So and so back there. We can't find a bus kid. You know, this one, somebody threw up in the nursery. You know, that, and it's 100 people coming, trying to make the visitors welcome. Am I, am I ready to preach? What's choir going to sing? Da-da. And she got mad because I walked by her and didn't shake her hand. And honest to goodness, I don't even remember that. I didn't do it on purpose, I can tell you that. I'd have reached out there and grabbed it and kept going. But she got mad and quit coming to church. Now let me ask you something, people. How are you going to build a church with people like that? How can you? It, it's a miracle to me. God gets anything done nowadays. Really, it is. People say, well, the Lord ain't blessing our church. Well, Lord, look, good night. Look what he's got to work with. I can't believe he gets anything done. Uh, uh, it's, it's a miracle. So I guess what I'm saying is, Paul told these Ephesians, he said, grow up. Grow up in the Lord. Grow up in the Lord. If, if, I, walk, if I walk by you and I've got my head this way or I'm short, or I just give you a half an answer, can you get over it? Well, Brother Danny just walked by me and he just, he just sort of acted like he didn't care. Well, what do you want me to do? Stop and cry when I'm in, when I got the whole service. <laughs> I mean, we can't. I can't just baby you all the time. It's impossible. It's impossible. Sometimes people think you forget everything else. Look right here. You look right here. I want you to hear this whole story. I went to the doctor the other day, and they got blah, blah, blah. fifteen minutes. Okay, I tell you what you do. You come fifteen minutes early next Sunday and tell me that. That's right. Okay. You can't. You can't walk up to a man flying an airplane. And say, let me show you my family pictures. I, I mean, uh, it, it's got it's got to dawn on you sooner or later. There's more people in here besides you, and and it ain't uh, your your wants and needs ain't the most important thing here. Uh, when we we come to church, and I'm not saying I don't I don't mean to say your 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 feelings ain't important. What I'm saying is they're not more important than everybody else. <laughs> And mine ain't neither. So he, they get the feelings already. Right quick, I'll say one more thing. Um, babies and little kids get all tore up over things that they don't understand. Get all tore up. Tore up over stuff they don't understand. Uh, Frankie, he's at that age, boy. He's at that age. I want to do this. No. Why? I want to watch. He wants to watch something on her phone. He, Buddy, I could tell that boy he'd be a... He'd have an addiction to a phone in a second if he can get near one. Just like all most kids already do. They're addicted to them screens. Like a drug. It's like a drug. And they'll, I, You know what I told him and Molly back in the summer? I said, look, it's a pretty day. The sun's shining outside. We've got a bad winter coming. Go outside and play. Kids don't go outside and play no more. They're on the couch and look at a screen. And But man, you tell them no. Why? They don't understand why. They don't understand why you can't let them lay and look at a screen all day. You know, because cause the sun's shining. You're lazy. <laughs> get off the couch and get outside. I know a kid that, I know a kid that his, uh, is his stepmom, actually, and she'd, on Saturday morning, he'd want to watch TV all day, and she'd say, no, you're not. You get outside and play. And she forced him out the door and had to lock the door, and he'd sit right there at the door like this with his back up and <laughs> So she'd let him in. That's true. That's a true story. Uh, kids, kids, they don't know how to play. You know? He said, there ain't nothing to do. Throw, throw rocks at a tree. <laughs> really? I used, we used to take a stick, like a broomstick, and throw up rocks and hit them, like baseball. I, I'd imagine the trees over there was a home run. And I'd keep hitting them until I could hit a home run. You know, they don't have no imagination. They don't have no, they, they can't, they say, I'm bored. I'm bored. I say, oh, I'll give you something to do, you little bro. You give them something to do? No, I don't want to do that. What they mean when they're bored is they want to watch something on TV 
or a screen or eat ice cream. That's what they mean. I'm bored. And you got to watch it. You got to watch it. And, and as, a, as a Christian, you got to watch being the same way. You got to watch being the same way. Uh, don't, don't get all tore up. Don't, I, I had a bunch of other stuff I could talk about. Um, don't, don't demand. It, it, let me say this. I'm through. Things don't always have to go your way. Things don't always have to go my way. We're individuals. We're a church. You might feel real strongly about something. That don't mean the whole church should have to do it. Uh, uh, or, or agree with you. Now, if it's Scripture, if it's Scripture, we'll fight. Amen? I'm willing to have a war over Scripture. Brother, if it tires the whole thing up and everybody quits and the building burns down, we'll fight over what the Scripture says. But if it's our opinions or a different feeling about something, it ain't worth fighting about, y'all. Just let it go. Let it go. Uh, let the Lord have His way. Amen. Let the church roll on for the glory of God. Uh, don't, don't have to demand that everything go your way. I mean, it's impossible. It's impossible for that to happen. All right, I'm going to stop right there this morning. I hope I've encouraged you, if I have encouraged me, uh, to grow up in the Lord, be a little more responsible, be an adult Christian. Uh, don't ever feel bad about reaching out to me if you have a prayer request or you're sick or something. I don't mean to give that impression at all, but for heaven's sake, y'all, uh, get in the book, grow up, be a strong Christian. Don't be the one that somebody has to drag in all the time. Be the one that helps somebody else out. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day, God. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for a good Sunday school class today. I pray that you bless everybody here this morning. Do what needs to be done in every life. God.